Okay, let's talk about the radicals and see uh, how we can combine things that are a little more complicated from all these operations that we've learned. So, for example, let's do. Uh, let's say you had the square root of eight times thirty-two to the power of negative three over. So we've got square root of eight. Is that legible? It's legible. Thirty. Uh, square root of square root of eight times thirty-two to the power of three over four. Now these are different bases, right? Uh, eight and thirty-two are different bases, uh, so we can't directly get the exponents involved. The only way we can get the exponents directly involved, which is this is multiplication, add the exponents together, is if we have the same base. Now, what we need to do is convert the 8 and the 32 to the same base. And I made up the question, and I know they go down to the same base, but if you were getting this for the first time, and if you didn't know they were going down to the same base, the only way you can do it is break it down to its prime factors, right? So let's break these down to their prime tree. Uh, use the prime tree, break, down, uh, break them down to their prime factors. 32 breaks down into 2 times 2 times 2. Right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the power of 3. Right? So this guy becomes 2 to the power of 3. So square root of 8 is 2 to the power. Or, forgot, forgot about the square root symbol. The square root symbol, as we talked about before, the 2 over here goes to the denominator as the power. So square root of 8 is 2 to the power of 3 over. 8 is 2 to the power of 3. Uh, square root of 8 is 2 to the power of 3 over 2. Now let's look at 32. 32 we've got to break down to its prime numbers, right? So 32 becomes 4 times 8, and 4 is just 2 times 2. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2, 2, 2. So 8, uh, 32 is 2 to the power of 5. So the way this works is it becomes 2 to the power of 5 to the power of, we got that guy up there too, right? To the power of negative 3 over 4. Now what we're going to do is apply our power rule, power to a power, means multiplication, right? So this becomes 5 over 1. So with multiplication, with fractions, top multiplies top, bottom multiplies bottom, this stays the same. 2 to the power of 3 over 2. And by the way, this would have been 2 to the power of 3 to a power of a half, which would have been 3 times a half is 3 over 2. I just skipped a step there, but I'm showing it over here. So hopefully you can do it over here too, right? So 5 over 1 times 3 over 4. 5 times 3 is 15. 1 times 4 is 4. So this becomes 2 to the power of negative 15 over 4. Right? Now we have them as the same base. Now that we've got them as the same base, we can add the exponents. So let's go over here. We got, I'm gonna do it with this so it doesn't get interfered with this, okay? So we take it up here. This is, the base is the same, two, three over two. Multiplication means addition, yes. And those are all in the exponent, okay? So this will be 2. The common denominator for 2 and 4 is 4. We multiply 2 by 2. We multiply the 3 by 2, so this becomes 6. Minus 15. So the answer to this is 6 minus 15 is 9. Negative 9. So it's negative 9 over 4. So the answer to the original question, which was, which was, what's the square root of 8 times 32 to the power of negative 3 over 4, is 2 to the power of negative 4 over 2. Now sometimes in the questions they give you in school or doing a test, they'll say they want it to be positive powers only. So if you want to convert this to the positive power only, the negative power here doesn't flip this. Some people make the mistake of flipping this. This is an operation on the base number. So it flips this. So the answer to this would be, an alternate answer to this would be, 
1 over 2 to the power of 9 over 4. Okay. That's another way of expressing it. Some people will want it as a negative power, some people will want it as a positive power. And this should be a 9, not an 8. 9. And sometimes they'll say use radicals, no fractions in the exponents. Now, the other way you could express the same question, same, same thing is, is take this 4, put it in the root, in front of the root, right? So it would be, this is equal to the 4th root of, oops, that's supposed to be 4 there, 4th root of 2 to the power of negative 9. Again, you can take another step further and say no negative power, so it would be 4th root of, 1 over 2 to the power of 9. Or you could take the 9 and expand it further, okay? So, uh, that's one way. Actually, I'm going to show you another answer to this. Let's break this down into its radical form. And what we're going to do with the negative 1 is we're going to kick it out at the end because I don't want to deal with fractions throughout the whole thing. I want to do the fraction at the end. So, the way you can express this is the 4th root of... You're like this. Two. I know. Power of nine. All to the negative one. Okay. This expression is the same as that. Because when oh, in the nice exponent, return. in the denominator, oh. when you got an ex in, the, uh, in the exponent, the denominator kicks up to the front. And make sure you put the four there because if you don't, it just means the square root. Now, the way this works is this is equivalent to the fourth root of. One and nine, two to the power of nine means uh, two multiplied by itself nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? So all those no. twos multiplied no. together means two to the power of nine. Now, what the four means here is. You're looking for quadruplets. You, you're looking for four things, com combining four of them together so you can bring them out as a single. So these four guys, and you got four guys here. So these four guys can come out of this boundary as a single two. These four guys can come out of the same boundary as a single two. So you got two coming out and another two coming out. When they come out, they multiply each other. So two times two is four. So this will be 4, 4 through it up. What do you got left in here? You got another 2 left in here. You got just one 2 left in here, right? So you put a 2 there to the power of negative 1. Now this might be sufficient, or they might say, express this as a positive power. And the way you would express it as a positive power, let's see where can we go here. Let's write it down here. The way you would express it as a positive power is kick this whole thing down. And the way you kick it down is the same answer for this would be, are we on the board? We're on the board. Would be 4, 4 through of 2. That, is that true? Yep, because the negative 1 kicks it down. So that expression and that expression are identical. And they're the same as the other two expressions. It's just the question of, you know, what's the cleanest way that you want to present it? Or how the solution is in the, or what the answer is in the multiple choices that they give you if it's a multiple choice exam or what your teacher prefers. Or, you know, if, according, in the question, they might tell you they don't want any negative powers or they don't want any radicals. You know, they just want it as an exponent or they do want it as a radical. No fractions in the exponent. So it really depends what uh, specifically they're looking for. Um, and how the question is phrased for you to decide which way you're going to give the answer. Personally, if it was me, that's good enough for me. It's the cleanest one I could see.